Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name is Anna I am a mom of two I unfortunately miscarried what would have been my third baby in October of 2020 and in today's video I'm gonna share with you guys my experience with having a DNC surgery what the surgery was like for me uh, what the recovery was and what my cycles have been since I am hoping that this video can help you if you're watching if you're going through this I'm so sorry if you will have miscarried and lost your baby and are now having to have a DNC or choosing to have a DNC. Um, I'm just hoping that this video can help you understand um, what is what happens during the surgery and what to expect afterwards. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So for this video, I'm not really going to go too much into what my miscarriage was like, uh, but if you are interested in hearing my miscarriage story, I will make sure to link that um, up there and also in the description down below. Uh, so you can watch that if you're interested. But um, basically, my baby's heart uh, stopped beating on October 6, 2020, and I was able to schedule my surgery, my DNC surgery, for that same um, afternoon. A DNC is a procedure that removes the tissue from inside your, your uterus that remains following a miscarriage. There are uh, a couple of different ways that they do this. They, of course, go in and dilate your cervix and they either use uh, a scraping tool or a suction tool to get the tissue and the uterine lining out of the uterus. In my case, I had what is called an aspiration or a suction DNC. That means, of course, that they used the suction and not the scraping tool to remove the tissue out of my uterus. So when I went into the hospital to have uh, my surgery, the first thing that uh, they did was, of course, admit me and put me back in a room. Uh, they started asking me all the questions and uh, made sure that they got me set up with an IV. The anesthesiologist came into the room and asked me even more questions and I was able to ask the anesthesiologist uh, questions as well. I was a little bit freaked out about the anesthesia. I wasn't sure exactly how it worked. I had heard that they put you under all the way but then I had also heard that they don't actually put you under all the way. I was really afraid to feel it or to be aware of the whole thing. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be local anesthetic. So I wanted to make sure to ask the anesthesiologist exactly how it worked. So the way the anesthesiologist explained this to me is that they do put you under enough to where you are not actually conscious but they don't put you under enough to where they have to intubate you. Apparently the surgery itself is only about 15 minutes long and so they don't need to put you under all the way to intubate you and all of that because that's just too much work for such a short surgery. They do give you the same medicine that they would as if they were putting you all the way under as if you were going under general anesthetic but they don't give you as much of it so you are able to breathe on your own but you are not conscious or aware of what's going on. She also explained to me that even though they do put you mostly under, they do still use a local anesthetic to make sure that you're not feeling any pain or discomfort at all. So once it was time to have my surgery, they came in and wheeled me out of the room that I was in to bring me into the OR. And as they were wheeling me in there, they put some sort of medicine into my IV that um, really relaxed me and kind of made me feel like droopy. Um, that was not the medicine that was going to actually put me under it. I guess they just give you something else before. I don't really know why. Um, but they give that to me and I was like really droopy. I remember going into the OR and then I remember them saying, okay, we're going to um, give you the anesthesia now. We're going to put you under. And I think I nodded my head or I said, okay. And then they put me under. And if you've ever been under general anesthesia, if you've ever been put under you know that it's like the weirdest feeling. It's not like getting tired and like falling asleep and then like slowly waking up. When you go under um, under general anesthesia, it's like you completely black out. You lose that time completely. So it was like they told me, okay, we're gonna put you under and then I blinked and then I got woken up by the doctor. So when the doctor woke me up from surgery, I of course immediately realized that it was over I didn't want to get um, emotional in this video. So I of course immediately realized that I was waking up from surgery and that they had gotten everything out and that I was no longer pregnant. So, man. So I started crying 
and my doctor was holding my hand and man he was the sweetest man on the planet I swear he was holding my hand and the whole time that they were wheeling me back into my recovery room he was just holding my hand and telling me he was really sorry for my loss and that everything was going to be okay and I just cried the whole time I remember asking him if um, uh, what they removed looked like a baby uh, I don't remember exactly what he said I think he said no uh, and he just held my hand told me everything was going to be okay and he stayed with me until I was uh, done crying and was awake enough um, after that I was only in the recovery room for maybe about an hour and my husband picked me up after coming home from the surgery I was very sore it was like very strong menstrual cramps uh, and then like an ab workout on top of it. It felt like my muscles were sore. It felt like my uterus was sore a lot more than normal menstrual cramps. And I was taking medication, so I can't imagine how much it would have hurt had I not been taking my medication. Um, I didn't have any pain or sensation of any kind uh, down there. It was just my uterus and uh, my, just my stomach in general. That night uh, I used a heating pad and my medication and my cramps stayed pretty strong for probably two days. Uh, after two days I didn't take my medication anymore and I still continued to cramp for probably about like 12 to 14 days afterwards but not very bad it was like really light menstrual cramps uh, the bleeding i was told uh, by the doctor that i would have uh, or to expect about three to four days of very heavy bleeding and that the bleeding should subside afterwards um, that's not what happened with me i bled pretty light for about 12 days none of the days i was like heavily bleeding um, I didn't pass any clots or any tissue or anything after that. It was just really light, um, not really light, but um, like medium to light <laughs> uh, period bleeding uh, for about 12 days. I was very curious to see how long the HCG would stay in my system. When I began bleeding, um, originally when I started having my miscarriage, I took a pregnancy test um, thinking that maybe that would show me if, it was, if the line was getting lighter that I was losing the baby before I had confirmation that I was losing my baby and the line was very dark and that gave me some sort of sense of security. I didn't realize exactly how HCG worked and how because I was already 10 weeks along that um, I had a lot of HCG in my system that would take a long time to um, leave my body. So I took another pregnancy test uh, that night after I came home from having surgery and uh, that was also very strong. I took another one the next day, same thing, very strong. I waited about five days after that and took another one and that's when my line finally started getting a little bit lighter, but of course it was still a very positive pregnancy test. Not that I was pregnant anymore, um, but that's what the HCG level showed on the pregnancy test. I took another pregnancy test uh, 12 days post the NC and that again was still positive. Uh, I waited a few more days after that and I took another one. Um, I believe this was 15 days post uh, surgery and that was just light enough that it was still visible, but basically gone. And then the final test that I took was 16 days post surgery and that one was finally negative. So it took a long time for the HCG to leave my body and I thought that my HCG had to completely leave my body before my cycle would start over or before I would start a yeah a new cycle so I thought that after HCG was gone 16 days later that would be about day one of my cycle and that I would get my period about a month after that uh, but that was not the case but the HCG doesn't have to leave your body all of the way before your cycle your next cycle starts my next my next cycle started uh, 34 days after my miscarriage so after October 6 2020 my cycle started on November 8th uh, 2020 so it was exactly 34 days later my cycles are usually always 28 days so it was about six days um, longer than a cycle would have been so 10 days 
before the HCG even left my body is when my cycle started. This is something I was very curious about and was not able to find anything about it on the internet so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that in this video because I had no idea how the HCG played um, in my cycle. I thought if my body was still producing HCG it would trick my body into thinking it was still pregnant and I wouldn't start a cycle. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that here. Since that, my cycles have regulated in length. They are, um, again, about 28 days apart. I have been trying to conceive another baby in those cycles and have been unsuccessful so far. Although really hoping this month is it. <laughs> um, and the only thing that I can really say um, that has been a major difference in my cycles. Again, they regulated in length, but my cramping is a lot, a lot worse. I had a lot of cramping prior to having kids and then almost no cramping at all after I had kids. And then after I lost this baby, all of my um, periods have been very painful. My cramps have been very intense. Uh, thankfully, the bleeding hasn't really been any different. I have normal heavy bleeding first, maybe second day, and then really light after that, normal four to five day cycles, um, or cycles of bleeding. So that hasn't been like a big change other than the cramping being a lot worse. I don't know if that has anything to do with the DNC itself, or if it's a miscarriage thing, or um, if maybe it's still a, a hormonal imbalance. In me, I do have a lot of um, changes hormonally still from being pregnant and then now because I wasn't, I after being pregnant I have like postpartum symptoms. I have lost a bunch of hair like I would have if I would have had a baby. My milk came in stronger. I'm still breastfeeding my one year old and I felt like as if I had just had a baby. My milk was like really intense although that has subsided by now it's been four months just a little over four months since um, my dnc and since my loss i am of course still dealing with like emotional things which i don't think that'll ever go away but physically that's that's about it everything that i mentioned um, stronger cramps and um, some weird postpartum um, symptoms so i know my hormones have technically <laughs> regulated although I forgot to mention too my skin has been like all out of whack I don't know if you'll be able to tell in this video but I have a lot more breakouts again after I had my kids uh, my skin had gotten better I've had acne my whole life but after having kids my skin had gotten better and um, it's back to being pretty bad again so that's kind of a bummer <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, getting pregnant again will also fix that <laughs> It'll be a win, 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 win. I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you're experiencing a miscarriage and um, are choosing or needing to have a DNC right now, I am so sorry for your loss. If you would like to contact me, you can uh, private message me on Instagram. I will make sure to leave that link down below. Or you can comment down below if you need someone to talk to or someone to vent to. I know that the emotions um, with all of this are really intense or if you just have questions about the DNC or um, emotional or physical things that you're going through I would love to be able to help you so let me know in the comments down below uh, if you enjoyed this video and would like to know more about my life and continue my journey I am uh, journaling right now my experience with um, trying to conceive post um, a miscarriage so if you'd like to see more about that then don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.